Howdy guys, Bob Ross here again to remind you that this series of lessons is about showing off our drawing skills while gaining marks across the assessment objectives. Can I introduce my friend Andy Warhol, who will introduce this week's task. Hello, my name is Andy Warhol. It's a great honor for you. This week we are looking at the range of marks made by a biro pen. You will be using hatching, cross hatching, and bracelet shading. You will need to experiment with the ways you can use the biro to give different effects. Remember to choose a suitable object or photograph to work from. Either repeat the object you drew for the first few weeks or choose something similar. Over to Mrs. Kester. Thank you, Bob and Andy. Today we're doing some biro drawing. You can see that I'm sketching out the lines really faintly to start with sped this up. This takes quite a lot of time. I would say it's about an hour's worth of work in this drawing. So drawing out the outlines, sketching really gently, um, delicate mark making, almost transparent in places. So you shouldn't need to use a rubber. It allows you to plan and you're working over the top of these lines. If you don't feel that you've got the confidence then use a pencil to start with and sketch in your lines first of all and then work over them in biro. I'm using a big biro. Actually the quality of the biro matters. You'll have used biros that have sort of bobbles of ink that end up going onto your page and smudging. So the, the quality of the biro is quite important for this drawing. So now I've done the outline, I've sketched over the top of it. I'm working over certain areas I'm constantly looking backwards and forwards from the object to the drawing and checking that everything's right. So this is probably the second or third time I've been over the surface, checking, rechecking the marks I'm making. At this stage, I'm using hatching, which is shading in one direction, and cross hatching, where you crisscross those lines to gradually build up layers of shade. I know that it's going to need to get quite dark in some areas, so I'm starting off with the darkest areas first and working into them. Because by building up those layers of ink, that's how we get the darkness and the depth. It's also worth mentioning that this could go in a slightly different direction at this point. If you were to spray hairspray over biro, it has a similar effect to the work we were doing last week with the pen and wash. So it actually makes it turn into a sort of dissolved ink. So it's worth experimenting with that too. Bear in mind that it goes through your paper. So if you are going to spray hairspray onto biro, it actually can go through two pages of your sketchbook. To do these videos, I've been taping the paper down to the table so that it doesn't move as I'm filming. It's at that point I realise how much I move the paper to work with me. So to shape the shell, I'm actually twisting and turning my hand possibly a lot more than I would usually because I think I would usually turn the page because what I'm trying to do is describe the shape of the shell. You can see that the lines I'm using instead of being hatching are curved. It's called bracelet shading where I'm going round the body of the shell. I'm trying to describe the form as well as the shape as well as the detail as well as the texture and pattern. So all of those things are in my mind as I'm busy working there. I'm forgetting that I'm drawing a shell. I'm looking at the object in front of me. I'm looking at the areas and the shapes of light and dark. And that's the way artists work. They look for shapes. They fig the best artists forget that they're drawing a particular object. They forget everything they know about that object. And they actually start to draw the shapes and the patterns that they see, focusing on small areas at one time. But you'll see that I'm dotting all over the image. I'm not just working in one particular area and sticking with that area. I'm constantly moving. Sometimes I'm holding the pen in different positions as well to create different shading marks. Although it's actually only four minutes in on the video, in reality, because this has been sped up, we're nearer to the 20 minute stage now. So I've actually marked in the whole of the shape the detail and pattern has been marked in and I'm really working on getting that depth of form. I'm working over areas to get the contrast, the difference between the lights and the darks and working over and over those areas to darken them and sharpen them as I go. 
constantly looking to see if there's any idea on the surface as to which way I should shade. So I'm looking for clues from the actual object itself. I use a sort of cross hatching to describe form. So rather than just crisscrossing like noughts and crosses, I'm actually curving my shading to really describe the form. So you'll see the, the curves are going around the body of the shell and then there's other curves going from the whole length of the shell as well to really describe that form. I'm starting to mark in the shadow now. That's quite important when you draw an object, a single object like still life, to include the shadow. It gives it solidity, it makes it look like it's sitting on a surface. Now this is quite tricky because this is an area where I would usually turn the page because to shade shadow it's really important you keep the shading lines uh, horizontal with the, the actual object so they look like the um, flatness of the table and actually I realised that was quite tricky because I couldn't turn the page round and I was ending up twisting into quite an unusual position um, so it might be worth turning a page for, for the shadow I also need to remind you that my view is quite different from yours the camera is pointing straight down, yet where I'm sitting to draw that, I'm looking from the side. So actually as I look at the real shell and I look at my drawing, I can see that the curves look really quite different. And that's because my viewpoint is different. It takes a bit of getting your head around that, the difference in the viewpoint. So they're not identical. I can see the curve um, is actually going quite a different direction from the angle that you're seeing it from where the camera is. The difficult thing with the drawing like this is knowing when to stop. Constantly you're checking, you're assessing your own work as you're going and deciding by stepping away from it, by looking at the two objects, deciding whether you've got the, the shade and the tone correct, is the level of darkness accurate, have you got enough detail in place, because a Drawing like this is very easy to overwork and as you overwork it, it darkens and darkens. I actually went on after this, after this video stops, and included some white pen. And I didn't feel the white pen was particularly successful in this drawing. In fact, I felt that it, it really did overwork it and spoil it. Whereas at this stage, it looks quite like another artist's work. There's an artist called Henry Moore, and Henry Moore was a sculptor. Um, and an artist using a variety of different media and he was particularly interested in how he could describe form through lines so it would be a great opportunity if this is my GCSE work to start to link this with the artist Henry Moore because it would make a lot of sense that my style of work was quite like his and I could make some really clear links and suddenly not only have I got assessment objective 3 which is drawing assessment objective 2 which is experimentation but suddenly I've linked with assessment objective one as well, which is my knowledge of sources, which is the artist that we're looking at. And I could go on to link my work with his in some more depth. Now you're always trying to look for those links in your artwork. Once you've completed your drawing, you need to evaluate its success. So even if you're not happy with that piece of work, it's worth putting it in your sketchbook and including it in your work. As long as you've annotated it to explain which parts you would improve, which you think are successful and which aren't, that's what the examiner's looking for. OK, over to you now. This is another two lesson piece of work to add to your drawing collection.